Do you get nervous about presenting or speaking in front of others? Or perhaps you struggle to communicate effectively in stressful environments? I know I do. In this video, I hope to help you with these issues by talking about how to manage your anxiety, some good ground rules with this type of communication, and then finally a sort of superpower to deal with hostile situations. Austin Kleon says, the best creators often steal like an artist, which is exactly what I'm doing here. For work, I did a bit of training, uh, which was an hour long lecture on YouTube uh, called Think Fast, Talk Smart, Effective Communication, uh, which was guy by a guy called Matt Abraham. It's a very popular video on YouTube and it was really good. So my aim here is to summarize the best points that I took away from it. Um, and if you find it really, really helpful, then I suggest you go and watch the full lecture, which is just on YouTube. So let's get to step one. Step one is all about managing your anxiety. In order to communicate effectively, you need to be on top of your nerves as much as is within your control. It's okay to be nervous. In fact, it can be a really good thing to have a little bit of nerves, but too many will prevent you from communicating effectively. Here are a few ways that Matt recommends that we manage our anxiety. The first thing is to greet your anxiety. So when you're in that situation, you're feeling a bit nervous, maybe you're going to speak or do a presentation. You've just got to greet that anxiety and just say, yeah, you know what? I am nervous about this situation. This is actually a well-researched technique which shows that uh, when you greet your anxiety and name that you are anxious about something, it actually stops the anxiety dead in its tracks from getting worse. It won't improve it and make it better, but it does stop it. So that's a good place to start. An additional helpful tip is actually to reframe your speaking situation. Too often we can see a speaking situation as sort of a me versus them, or even more of a performance where you're trying to put your best self in front of a bunch of people. Instead, if you reframe it as like a conversation, that can put you a bit more at ease. And you can do this by asking questions, uh, such as rhetorical questions, and also using conversational style language. Uh, and Matt gives a really good example, so I'll play that clip now. To be more conversational, use conversational language. Instead of one must consider, say, this is important to you. We all need to be concerned with. Do you hear that inclusive conversational language? It has to do with the pronouns. Instead of step one, step two, step three. First, what we need to do is this. The second thing you should consider is here. Use conversational language. He also says that bringing yourself into the present moment is a really good way of controlling your nerves. Often, our anxiety is all about the fear of what could go wrong in the future. But if you manage to bring yourself into the present moment, then you're often preoccupied with what's happening right now that you don't get too anxious about what's gonna happen in the future. And the key thing is that all those things that happen in the future are pretty much all out of your control. What you can control is what you do with yourself right now. So he recommends um, doing a few different things to bring yourself into the present moment. It could be for you listening to your favorite music that really locks you in. I know a lot of athletes and people like to do that. Uh, one thing that he does is tongue twisters uh, that he'll say where he's making sure to say them correctly and he's thinking so much about it that he doesn't actually think about the future at all. He's very much in the present moment. And then the final thing he recommends is maybe just doing some sort of exercise. For example, a bunch of press ups, because uh, when you're sweating away and trying really hard to exercise, you're often not thinking about the future. So this is all the stuff to do sort of preparing before you speak. Now let's get into the actual ground rules of when you are speaking. There was a lot that he said here, so I'm not gonna go over everything, but I'm just gonna highlight you some of my favorite points uh, that Matt made. A maxim that he used was dare to be dull. In other words, don't worry about just saying it as it is and not trying to spice it up to make it sound really, really great. Often greatness comes from just saying it as it is. Here's how Matt puts it. Rather than striving for greatness, dare to be dull. And if you dare to be dull and allow yourself that, you will reach that greatness. It's when you set greatness as your target that it gets in the way of you ever getting there. Because you over-evaluate, you over-analyze, you freeze up. So the first step in our process today is to get out of our own way. Dare to be dull. An additional point he makes, uh, which I think mainly applies to meetings, is really to slow down and actually listen to what your audience is saying or asking of you. Too often, we are in a situation where we listen just long enough until we think we know what they're talking about and then we jump in to answer whatever it is we think they're asking. But oftentimes, it's much better to just sit back and let them talk and really get the full picture of what they're asking before you jump in. That gives you more time to think of a response. Next is one of my sort of favorite pieces of advice, which I'm kind of learning how to put into practice at the moment, which is to tell a story. Often when we're speaking spontaneously and we haven't been able to plan, we have to think of two things at the same time. What we actually want to say and how we're going to say it. 
if we use sort of story techniques, which I'll go into in a second, that takes care of the how we're gonna set. We just have to think about the what. In other words, structure sets you free. Now here are two structures that he gives uh, that you could use in any sort of conversational situation. The first is problem, solution, benefit. So for example, our pump failed because of this. We solved it using this technique, which now means that we have our water available for X, Y, and Z machine. The method I like because it sounds quite catchy is what, so what, now what? What is the problem or situation? Why is it relevant? And how are you going to deal with it? And you can actually apply this very broadly, uh, either just with you know, conversations with your friends or actually in a proper sort of presentation or meeting with a client or boss. I really encourage you to try and give this a go the next conversation you have, no matter who it's with. What, so what, now what? Step three relates to a fantastic yet simple piece of advice for dealing with hostile situations. Let me just play that clip for you now. The single best tool you have to buy yourself time and to help you answer a question efficiently is paraphrasing. The paraphrase is like the Swiss army knife of communication. If you remember the show MacGyver, it's your MacGyver tool, right? So when a question comes in, the way you paraphrase it allows you the opportunity to reframe it, to think about your answer, and to pause and make sure you got it right. So when you're under those situations, if you have the opportunity to paraphrase, say, so what you're really asking about is X, Y, and Z, that gives you the opportunity to employ one of these techniques. I really, really love this advice about paraphrasing. It's something that I'm still kind of learning how to do and I don't really know yet how to use it effectively, but I can see my colleagues who are more senior and more experienced than me using it really effectively. For example, if a contractor gets really angry with me on site and starts to blame me for various things, instead of retaliating and just sort of arguing with them, I can use this tool to reframe the situation by saying something along the lines of, Okay, so what I'm hearing is that this, that and the other are causing you issues in this way and that way. And by doing this, I'm creating time for myself to come up with a response and also reframing the situation in a less aggressive or targeting way at me. An additional golden nugget that I got from uh, Matt's talk was to acknowledge the emotion that the person is feeling, not to name it though. Again, if you're in a meeting and someone's getting angry with you, don't say, I can see that you're angry because they'll immediately retaliate with, no, I'm not, that will just make things worse. Instead, what you can do is acknowledge the emotion by saying something slightly different, like along the lines of, I can see you really care about this, or I can see you're really passionate about this subject and you want to find a solution. And, and that way you're acknowledging that they are angry in another way uh, without actually saying it. And it often diffuses the situation um, because it's, it's much worse to sort of let a, an emotion linger uh, and just ignore it. All of this I've, I've seen used by my uh, much more experienced colleagues um, who I'm still trying to learn all of this from, um, but I'm really hoping I can learn how to apply this and hopefully you can apply this in your work too. So if you did find this helpful, then maybe subscribe to this channel as this is the type of stuff that I'll be uh, producing content around, effective work and rest as I call it. Um, and also if you enjoyed this video, definitely go check out the full lecture from Matt as it's got a lot more detail and some interesting exercises uh, to use to help you become better at spontaneously communicating. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.